today we are going to be talking about ASCII docs, which is a text editor technique that we can use to simplify our documentation. So what is ASCII docs? Well, ASCII docs is a text document format for writing notes, documentation, articles, books, and so on. It's just a way of simplifying like a text editor format where your text is readable in pretty much any format. Like if you're using a text editor, if you're using Vimeo, uh, not Vimeo, Vim, Nano, uh, basically from any command line editor, you can read the documentation cleanly. And what's cool about this is ASCII docs allows you to convert this text into essentially any format. So you can do HTML, PDF, uh, XHTML, XML. Uh, so basically you write something that's clean, easy to read, and then you can essentially translate to any type of format that you want. And ASCII docs is also highly configurable. It has plugins, it has themes. You can also inject code, you can inject HTML. I mean, you can do so much with it. And so here's an example of four different flavors of the same document. So down here in the right-hand corner is a clean man uh, text written in ASCII code. Uh, above it is a, the same uh, text in PDF Apache FOP. Uh, to the top left, this is your standard PDF file. So if you actually try to read the text of PDF, this is what you would see. And then in the lower left is how this text would look in HTML. So in order to translate this clean text into HTML, you have to have all these different tags. PDF, you have to have all the different PDF syntax, uh, PDF FOB. It, it's, e it's a little cleaner to read, but you still have a lot more syntax in here than you would just in a plain text document. So this is kind of the beauty of using ASCII doc. It lets you write a very clean, readable text document that you can read from any essentially command line, text editor, whatever. But you can convert this document to any format that you need for the web, uh, or even just for straight up documentation. So if you wanted to create like a PDF book or a manual that you could publish with your software, uh, you could take the ASCII doc here and then just run it through the compiler and it would generate the man file, it would generate the PDF file uh, or the ebook file that you could then publish. All right, so that's it for the slides for now. So let's actually get out here. This is going to be more of a hands on today. All right, so out here, let's start by going to the ASCII homepage. So ASCIIDocs.org is the base homepage for ASCII Doc. It's got a fairly straightforward installation section here uh, down at the bottom. Uh, it's installed from a GitHub repository, uh, which by the way, I found out that ASCII Docs is kind of also the de facto documentation format that GitHub is using. So if you want to install on Windows, your setup's here, it's pretty straightforward. Um, Linux is also pretty straightforward. Mac has a little uh, issue right now. So Homebrew has kind of been disabled from the pseudo level. So if you want to install uh, ASCII docs on a Mac, you have to actually configure the user rights to the folders for the installation. Uh, the other thing it's going to want is it's also going to require Python 3 uh, for your installation so that you can actually run Python to convert the documentation. So for instance, uh, we have to test the installation. So we have a doc, ASCII doc.txt. I've got this installed already. Here. Development. Docs. So here we have an ASCII doc text. And as you can see, it's just a straight 
text document, but using the ASCII uh, doc format. And we'll walk through what each of these syntaxes mean here. But just if I scroll through this, you can see that this is a very readable document. It's very clean. Uh, I mean, and you can read it, you can understand it. Now, the, if I close this document here and I run the converter, so if I ran this Python ASCII docs pi against the text file, I've already done. So here we would see the HTML version of that same text file. So now we have all of our links and we have all of the documentation. This is the power of ASCII docs. So ASCII docs can look very clean from a ASCII perspective, from a command line perspective or text document, but then you can convert it to any format that you need. And then once you convert it, you can then deploy it with your application, either be an e-reader file, or you can deploy the HTML straight to your website. All right, so I'm going to jump out to this other URL here, uh, spartan.github.io ascii.box. Now you can install this yourself, but there's a couple of different ones of these online. So you don't really need to do the setup yourself. This is just kind of a text editor that you can type and type your ASCII code here, and you'll see the output over here. So the first thing I want to show you is, so if we look at the ASCII.txt, We have this header information here. Drop this in here. So this website currently ignores this. They're running a different theme, but you can put in a header information this way and it will ha have like author information, uh, email, different types of format, text documentation, icons, numbering, and website. Uh, I believe this guy's running a Ruby implementation. So the other way to display your header is with the underlines. Or we can do, here we are, dashes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. The so 12 dashes gets you a title of your document and the little block underneath it so that everything you type is now going to be inside of our block. We could put some text in there with some markup. So here on the left, there is no reason to prefer this particular markup. Uh, it has all the features, footers, and so on. And on the right, it is kind of cut off right now. This is using the uh, Pac-Man. Uh, I believe this has like uh, Ruby and Pac-Man for this particular editor. There's some things we can do. So if you're thinking like HTML, we'll leave our title here. Let's be, and let's put in a header. So headers in HTML, are the typical H1 through H5. Well, in ASCII docs, you can represent the levels or your headers like so. So we have the dashes, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven dashes is equivalent of H1. As you can see, you start with your header, you follow it with the dashes, and it's translated to a header. Anything after the dashes is just plain text. Do this one as an example. Okay. 
So actually what you have to do is you have to make sure that you have the dash under each character that represents your title or your uh, headers. So here we have example one. Then you have your different levels. So this is H2. This is represented by squiggles. You have uh, shift backwards hyphen, and you have your carrots, and then pluses for level four. You have our examples. So one dashes, two wiggles. Three are our carrots. H4 are plus. Now we can also represent these uh, the same way with equals. So if I do equal, equal, I can then do level one, which is our H1. If I do three, now an H2. This is kind of a cleaner way of doing uh, your headers or your different levels. Level three. As you can see over here, it's fairly readable. It translates really well. All right, so if we just want text, you can just start typing text. Creates any text underneath, like a, the P tag in HTML. So it's like P, so there's no enters. You have to put actual breaks. If you want a title inside of your documentation, you start with a period, and then you just do title. And then once you put some text underneath it, you see that the title pops up. Title. Next. Now, if I want to do a literal paragraph, you have to start with a space. And you'll see it puts a block around it. And then what you do here is everything you type, it reads the enter key. So this is now treated like a three. It's a pre-formatted. Then now you can do all your indentation. And anytime you put a space in between, it will put a block for those horizontal lines. Some other things that are cool with using ASCII, uh, you can do tip. Now it becomes a tip block. Now if you apply formatting, you can change icons. So this could be like an information icon, a warning icon. Uh, you can also do things like important, caution, warnings. Text. The warning block and the caution block. Now this guy doesn't have the icons installed, 
But like I said, this could be uh, just like a little notepad or an information icon. Uh, this could be like an alert exclamation point. Uh, this could be like a red warning stop sign, uh, caution. Uh, the other thing you can do with these is you can also, um, essentially they're a, a block. So every time you keep typing, it just keeps adding it. So it, it keeps expanding. And you can format that. Uh, another way you could also do a note. So if we want to change this up here uh, with our title, but then also make this a note, do this, Oops. all caps. And now it creates a note block. And you can also change your note to be an icon as well. You could also do things like uh, code. So you could give it a title. You put in the source. So this is like the code tag in HTML. And then you can actually put in your code. If you install the theme or the plugin for the code, the code will actually be color coded as if it was in an editor.